In the headlines, the UWP blamed for vandalism and theft in Roseau following Tuesday's protest action, while the party's leader calls for calm and an emergency meeting to chart the way back to peace. Business place representatives condemn damage to their property as they pick up the pieces. And the aid bank nets $1.2 million in profits in the last financial year. I am Andrea V with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. Thank you for staying with us. First up, swift condemnation of the United Workers' Party for vandalism and looting, which took place after the Kennedy Avenue meeting ended on Tuesday. The public meeting was supposed to have been held between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m., but it went beyond that. Organizers say Tuesday's UWP meeting calling for the resignation of Prime Minister Skerritt ended with no incident. But senior counsel Anthony Astefan describes the events as a dark day and says the UWP leadership must take full responsibility for criminal activity which took place in the city Tuesday night. Linton must also take responsibility for going on the radio and accusing the police of being responsible when he knows full well that that was not true and that he had a he had a legal obligation as the political leader of the United Workers' Party to call for the violence to end. Not one leader of the United Workers' Party called for the violence to end. This thing was planned and the violence was executed as part of a political plan of the United Workers' Party. And Gabriel Christian must take responsibility because he called and gave a deadline of 15 days for the Prime Minister to go or else. Meantime, the United Workers' Party executive met in emergency session on Wednesday morning to review Tuesday's events and to determine their next move. The opposition leader is also calling on the leadership of political parties, civil society and law enforcement to meet in an emergency session to agree on a national plan for the restoration and maintenance of peace and order. Because what happened last night was truly unfortunate. But the United Workers Party at this time remains concerned We have some ideas about what happened because we were on the ground yesterday. Like right? I was there last night. Now I will just say that this attempt to put the two events together and to say it was because of the meeting that what happened last night happened. We cannot simplify it in those terms because our meeting ended hours before this happened. And a lot of things happened between the time the meeting ended and the violence erupted that the police must speak to and must speak to with clarity. Those who saw and used the meeting as cover to engineer disorder and destruction to embarrass the UWP or for other reasons know themselves and owe it to a deeply concerned nation to speak truth, to speak the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Mr. Linton says after the UWP meeting ended, he returned to Roseau to try to intervene. I was one of the few who actually, having left the meeting and gone home to my children, my wife came back into the city in an attempt to talk with police officers and with the individuals on the ground with whom they appeared to be having the standoff I put myself at risk in the middle of it I faced the anger of those who were standing against the police that was not about our meeting yesterday afternoon That was not about our meeting. 
and what happened last night had absolutely nothing to do with our meeting. The leader of the United Workers' Party says his team does not support the events which took place following the public meeting. The United Workers' Party condemns the acts of violence and vandalism that erupted in the streets of Roseau during the evening of February 7, 2017, causing widespread loss and damage to business enterprises and triggering fears for safety and security in a season of heightened tensions in our practice of civility. As the events unfolded, the leadership of the United Workers' Party was being blamed on the grounds that the disorder resulted from the public meeting in Upper Kennedy Avenue earlier in the day, calling for the resignation of Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt. Both events are unrelated, and we condemn these baseless criticisms as forcefully as we condemn the lawlessness visited on the capital city on Tuesday night. And to help put this all in context, here is Idona John Baptist with a look at some of what transpired on Tuesday. <laughs> Scenes of a protest turned violent on Tuesday night as a clash between rioters and police ensued following a public opposition meeting on Kennedy Avenue. Riot police were forced to step in using tear gas to disperse the protesters. Reports are that protesters insisted that a truck providing music to Tuesday's afternoon's UWP and DFP meeting was not moving unless it exited Kennedy Avenue along the Financial Center route. Contrary to police instructions after the political meeting had ended, the police advice to the truck driver was that he should exit Kennedy Avenue through Independent Street. Protesters were, however, adamant that is not the route they wanted the truck to take to exit and took measures such as laying in front of the truck so it would not move. The truck driver attempted on more than one occasion to move the truck. Opposition leader Lennox Linton returned to the scene after the political meeting to calm the situation. However, protesters still did not comply. Broken glass bottles, vandalized bins under the Adopter Bin program, and residents of Roseau affected by tear gas were some of the effects of Tuesday night's incident. Idona John Baptist, Channel 5 News.
Well, the Dominica Christian Council issued a statement on Wednesday condemning acts of violence which followed the UWP meeting on Tuesday. The statement was issued by Reverend Janet Roberts of the Anglican Church, His Lordship Bishop Gabriel Malzer of the Catholic Church, and Reverend Dr. Novel Josiah of the Methodist Church. As we all know, a country's citizens possess the right to peacefully protest on issues of common concerns. As a Christian council, we uphold the rights of individuals to gather together to demonstrate and to protest. We, however, condemn the unsavory acts of violence and vandalism which resulted in the destruction to public and private property. No form of violence can ever be good for our country. They only serve to instill fear, create instability, and retard the nation's development in an atmosphere of peace. In the face of violence, the end never justifies the means. We also encourage wholesome dialogue and meaningful conversation on the issues impacting our country. The future of our nation is in the hands of all its citizens, leaders and people alike. Let us therefore work together to build a peaceful and God-fearing nation Coming up on the Channel 5 News, the impact of Tuesday night's riots on Roseau. Welcome back. Representatives of business places in the city, which were vandalized after Tuesday's public political meeting, have condemned the acts of violence. A Channel 5 News team visited some of these establishments on Wednesday. A fire had been set at the back of the Emens building, which houses Digicel and the Muslim store. This fire caused significant damage to a storeroom used by the Muslim store. Damages to refrigerators, stoves, washers, headphones, a lot of items just to name a few. And damage in the amount of how much? Um, in the amount of $750,000, above $750,000. Where our displays are, nothing really happened, but a lot of smoke entered into here. So it's like the place is all dusty, smoky. So today we are here to do cleaning. So it's all about cleaning for us today. Right. Do you have any idea how long it might be closed for? We are not too sure because we don't have any lights at the moment. So we are just waiting on Dominic and waiting to see how fast the progress of the cleaning will be. I can say publicly that I condemn the act that was done. And I don't, th I don't know Dominica to be a place like that. I've always known Dominica to be a very, very peaceful and quiet place. And things like that that really happened now, it's like I'm wondering, you know, will it happen again? And I really, really condemn what has happened. Over at the First Caribbean International Bank, it was business as usual, as only the door to its ATM had been damaged. Overnight, we had some minor damage to the ABM room entry door. Uh, it's, it's minor, as I said, nothing significant. Uh, we are moving to have the um, damage repaired today. Uh, but business continues as usual, as usual. All staff are at their workstations and we're open for business. Okay, and just to clarify, no damage into the actual machine itself? No damage to the actual ATM, fortunately. What do you have to say to these acts of violence? Certainly not something that we support. It's unfortunate what happened last night. Um, but as I said, it's, uh, we're continuing in business uh, this morning and uh, getting everything fixed and, and up and running as usual. Work is expected to resume on Thursday at the Digicel store, which was also vandalized and robbed on Tuesday night. Three of our, our windows, our um, windows at the Digicel Center store got, got affected. It was um, damaged from last night. And uh, I guess the protesters you know, um, broke into the store and um, quite a few of our handsets were also stolen. Talk about this store on the, the office on the Well, there was a fire um, between the Muslim store and, and post office um, early this morning. Um, we were contacted by the police um, officers. Um, we came down, there was a lot of smoke coming out from the building. Uh, one of our generators in the back office got burnt. 
um, but everything is back to normal now at the um, office on the Bayfront. Well, it is disappointing that um, this, you know, happened um, yesterday um, evening. Um, so we really want to, to caution um, Dominicans, you know, against um, violence. And we do hope that um, we'll have, you know, a peaceful time, especially um, leading up to the carnival season. Valentine's store on Great George Street also fell victim to vandalism and theft. And trust me, all I could do was just cry. Mm -hmm. That's all I could do was just cry. Describe your face, what was it like? Um, it was in a mess. Glass all over, shoes, um, all at the back, the boxes of shoes were all over the place. And when you walk in, it was just, as I said, glass everywhere. And talk to us about the branch at the previous cinema. Um, I went there this morning and um, the shoes were all over the place. Uh, the glass was broken as, I mean, because it's just, you know, all, the whole front is glass. So all that was broken as well. Honestly, I, it's like I'm lost for words right now because I can't believe actually people actually do, do stuff like that. Pee Wee's Ice Cream Shop on Cork Street and the Office of Attorney at Law, Duncan Stowe on River Street, were among the other establishments vandalized during Tuesday's riot. In related news, Prime Minister Skerritt, for the first time, publicly reacted to Tuesday night's protest at the Aid Bank's AGM on Wednesday. Those of us who have a Bible and go to church every morning and praise God or praise Allah will be condoning this action by the New Yorkers Party because of our partisanship. And we call this country ours, that we love this country, that we're not prepared to stand in defense of the people who have invested their monies and criminals go over the streets and destroy these people's investments. I visited Pee Wee Ice Cream. Here's a couple seeking to create jobs for people, invested hundreds of thousands of dollars, destroyed today. And we can wake up in the morning and be okay with it, that nothing happened in the country, that we're not going to let our voices be heard and condemn this because we are supporting the party or because we do not love like we just carry it or the Labour Party. That has nothing to do with me. When we send to the world the impression that this country is not a place to do business and to come to visit, how are we going to create jobs in Dominica? How are we going to sustain the economy? How are we going to expand the economy to create, to address the poverty levels in our country? I am saying to people in Dominica that nobody and no groups of individuals are going to get me out and my government out without going through the ballots of Dominica. Let it be known, let it be known that there should be no actions on the part of individuals in Dominica to overthrow this government. None. So if that's what is their intention, I am sending a message to them. They better rethink their plans. The Prime Minister delivered an address to the nation on the matter on Wednesday night. Tourism Minister Robert Tong has expressed fears that Tuesday's riot could negatively affect tourist arrivals. Tong toured the capital with Prime Minister Skerritt on Wednesday morning. He has blamed the United Workers' Party for the effects of Tuesday night's incident. Those who, who, who organized the event are responsible for that particular event and they should have done a lot more in terms of ensuring that the crowd was dispersed. In terms of negative news, any negative news can severely impact um, tourism and, 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 and business Dominica. No one wants to come to a country where they supposed um unrest um, even you um, would you want to go to a country where there's unrest so obviously it's going to have um, a negative impact on the country and we as people have to do our best to ensure that we show that um, Dominica is back to, to normal. We've reached out to all the cruise lines to assure them that um, the police have things under control and the people of Dominica are ready and willing to accept them and we'll do our best not to have any injuries to anybody. Tong says the likely impact on tourism is being monitored. Uh, a lot of work had to go in terms of bringing Dominica back to normal. The police had a lot of work to do until late hours of, of the night. Um, in terms of um, tourism, we had to be monitoring the situation and waiting for the, from the go-ahead from the police department. Because um, today we had, um, we had and we now have two um, big ships that were coming into Dominica. You look at maybe over 4,000 people. So you can well imagine the impact it would have had on the, the vendors, the tour guys, the taxi drivers, the tour operators. Just imagine if that these two vessels were not here, a significant amount of revenue would have been lost. So we are happy that we were able to work together with the police 
And um, at about 3 o'clock in the morning, I got the all, all clear. And again, we reconfirmed that about 5 in the morning to ensure that the teams of persons who were working to clean the city could come and clean the city as quickly as possible. Uh, we also had um, some additional, an additional team to come in because there are lots of flower pots and um, green beans all burnt. The tourism minister says he is not concerned that it will have an impact on the staging of Carnival 2017. In terms of Carnival, at this point in time, I don't see anything being affected. Um, by this, unless something else ca happens, and then this, the, the police would have to take, would, have, would advise, you know, in terms of what is the security risk and what actions should be taken to ensure that our people are safe. And Prime Minister Skerritt told the Aid Bank's annual general meeting on Wednesday that the institution had come a long way. Skerritt was speaking against the backdrop of the Aid Bank's $1.2 million net profit for the last financial year. Mr. Skerritt said upon entry into office, the current administration discovered that the financial institution was being mismanaged. There was tremendous political interference in the lending policies of the bank, and to the point where the Caribbean Development Bank indicated that it will not conduct any business and transactions with the aid bank and stop providing financing to the aid bank. What did we do? We invited the International Monetary Fund to do an independent assessment of the aid bank and advise us on actions to be taken. But one of the actions which the IMF recommended, and we agreed with several other recommendations in that report, but one of the recommendations which I did not agree with as Minister of Finance and the leader of this country was to shut down the aid bank. And we took a decision to seek to implement reforms at the aid bank to the point where the Caribbean Development Bank was satisfied that the policy directors of the aid bank was placing the aid bank on a prudent and responsible footing. And the, aid, the CDB resumed its borrowing and business with the aid bank from that day until today. The Prime Minister says government also went to work on making sure that the private sector could get attractive lending rates from the aid bank that they could work with. So we have been over time been able to drop the interest rates from 11% to 6% and 6.5%. And what the government has been able to do also is to provide the aid bank with direct financing. We started with housing, where we have been able to drop the interest rate to the lowest that has been, that's been seen at any banks in Dominica, to 5% to private citizens in Dominica. So coming from 11 and 10 percent to 5 percent, and there is no bank in Dominica, no bank in Dominica, who has been able to match this 5 percent or beat that 5 percent. Through the Agriculture Investment Unit, farmers receive loans at 0 and 2 percent. Under the Economic Citizenship Program, financing has been made available to tourism and farming at 3 percent interest. Also under the same CIP program, Cabinet has just approved another line of credit for musicians at 2%, leading the Prime Minister to issue this warning. Those of us who contract loans from the bank, we must keep to the agreements which we have signed. We must keep to the agreements which we signed, because if we do not honor our commitments, it will be difficult for the bank to have this revolving ability to generate funds by itself now to be able to extend facilities to other deserving people. That's news. Coming up next is Kenny Williams with your sports highlights. First up in sports, Trinidad and Tobago defeated Kent by five wickets in the Najiko Super 50 on Wednesday. TNT won the toss and decided to field. Batting first, Kent finished on 194 in 46 overs. W. Gidman 50, Stevens 38 and A. Blake 36. In reply, TNT scored 198 for five. D. Ramdin scored 56 and K. Otley 32. Meantime in Tuesday's games, Jamaica beat Guyana by 20 runs. Jamaica took first to knock and made 255 all out. 
Stephen Taylor added 86. Guyana replied with 235 all out. Asad Fudadin contributed 57 to Guyana's total. Sports continues with this item where President of Dominica State College has a game-changing vision for the institution that could bring more development to sports here. This as DSC has copped a number of championship titles in sports over time. Uh, Dominica State College has been doing well in, in all the areas that they play. Uh, we win most of the championships in netball football. Uh, but um, I personally would like to develop our sports program to, by ensuring that we have the capacity and the training areas for them and that's why we're in, now working in government to get titles to our land so we can get help in developing the field, cricket field, soccer field. Um, and, um, I'm confident we'll do that and of course the Indus Stadium will be on our campus. We hope to have some um, co cooperation with the government and all that's managed. He says the student population at DSC makes it ideal for having such sporting improvements. With 1,890 students here, we have the, the nucleus of athletes for the country and we should be, as a national college, have the capacity to train them to be international athletes. The college is sitting on 32 acres of land. I know some people um, have encroached on some of it, but um, we think we have the space to do that. Um, uh, if you go up by the tank, our tank, you will notice there's a whole lot of areas that we can develop and exactly behind the parking lot to my left, uh, other areas that we plan to develop. Peters would like to see the completion of the various sporting infrastructure before 2020. We'd like to see it done yesterday, but of course we have to write for the grants. We This college doesn't depend on government for everything. We, we, we are working with the OECS um, other colleges for the indoor stadium, but the government also has a plan for it, so whoever gets it first, that's fine with me. But um, in terms of the, of the cricket and soccer grounds and track grounds, we like to work with the Canadians or um, USAID or any one of the others, EU. So right now we are interested, in, we are concentrating on grant writing for our college. So we are optimistic we'll, we'll do that. Our own goal is for be, before 2020. Moving on to football, where Poirier playing field will be the grounds for the match between Ray Charles Point Michel and Digital Newtown Juvenile Academy Harlem United from 5.30 p.m. in the Dominica Football Association's Division I League. That match will be followed by Police Sports Club versus Andy Williams Spartans at 7.30 in the evening. And the Dublin FC will play host to Mao Soka Strikers at 6 p.m. Meantime reports from the DFA say that Bath Estate FC has been pulled out of the fixtures of the Dominica Football Association as investigations have begun into an incident which took place in the Division I league match against Trafalgar FC. As a result, the match between Malta Carib Bath Estate FC and All Saints FC carded for Wednesday at Poirier Playing Field has been called off. Next up, the Castle Bruce and Isaiah Thomas Secondary Schools dominated play in the male and female categories of the Sports Division Secondary Schools Volleyball Championships on Tuesday, beginning with the Pierre Charles Secondary versus CBSS game, where CBSS won in straight sets. Final scores were 25-5, 25-10, 25-9 in the female category. The male CBSS team had similar fortunes, winning their game against PCSS in straight sets. Game scores were 25-14, 25-15, and 25-19. Elsewhere, Isaiah Thomas Secondary won 3-0 against St. John's Academy female team. Final scores 25-6. 25-18 and 25-12. The ITSS boys also won in straight sets against SJA. Scores 25-12, 25-20 and 25-23. The competition continues on Friday. In netball, where Convent and Wesley High Schools registered wins in the Sports Division Secondary Schools Under-14 Championships on Tuesday, CHS A-Team defeated Dominica Grammar School 17-8. For Convent, we had Mia Sylvester with 12, while Shante Hazel chipped in with 5. And in the Wesley High versus St. Martin Secondary game, WHS won 7-5. The games continue on Friday. And Lead Institute will be looking for a better performance when they come up against the Dominica Grammar School in the 2017 Massey Insurance Under-20 Cricket League on Thursday. Previously, Lead suffered a heavy defeat to Goodwill Secondary, going down to the winners by an innings and 72 runs on Tuesday. Thursday's game is carded for Botanic Gardens from 10 a.m. That's all the sporting highlights for now. I am Kenny Williams. Join us next time.
your weather forecast is next. Hello, good evening. Welcome to your weather. I'll be your presenter, Farah Rockeray. Today, occasional cloudy skies with some showers. Was the weather conditions at the Canefield Station? We can see the conditions was a dominant feature today, not only for Dominica, but the rest of the Lesser Antilles. We move on now to some earlier visible satellite imagery, and what it showed is a cluster of low level and mid level clouds across Martinique through Guadeloupe. We move on now to some earlier radar imagery of this afternoon, and what it indicated is some scattered showers concentrated mainly in the central portion of the Eastern Caribbean. Tonight's weather is expected to be partly cloudy, too cloudy, hazy, and breezy. And tomorrow, an increasing cloudiness is expected. Mostly cloudy skies, hazy conditions, and also some breezy conditions once more is forecasted. A small craft warning is in effect. All users of the sea are asked to exercise caution, particularly those on the East Coast. The sea conditions will be moderate to rough, and waves are expected to peak up to 10 Feet. Let's take a look now at the three-day forecast. Well, as you can see, similar conditions are expected for the three-day period. That is mostly cloudy skies with some breezy conditions expected. Also, some haze will be in the area Thursday and Friday. Let's move on now to the Caribbean forecast. Well, once more, Weak and stable conditions will be the dominant feature affecting weather conditions across the islands. Therefore, occasional cloudy skies with some showers can be expected and also some possible hazy and breezy conditions as well. On the international scene, snow is expected tomorrow for the city of New York, whereas some sunny skies anticipated for Beijing. Thunderstorm activity forecasted for Miami, overcast skies for London and some cloudy skies with some showers for the city of Caracas. The sun will rise tomorrow at 6.32 a.m. and will set at 6.07 p.m. For more information, you could always visit our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Join us tomorrow evening for your next weather broadcast. Thank you. To end the news, the headlines once more. The UWP blamed for vandalism and theft in Roseau following Tuesday's protest action, while the party's leader calls for calm and an emergency meeting to chart the way back to peace. Business place representatives condemn damage to their property as they pick up the pieces. And the aid bank nets $1.2 million in profits in the last financial year. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Lee. And to all our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Join us tomorrow.